Hello everyone and welcome along to uh, another video on the SQL Undercover Inspector. Uh, my name's Adrian from SQL Undercover or you may know me as ADBA from uh, the SQL community or if you've been looking on our GitHub repository. So today we're just going to cover the basics of the link server installation. Um, the reason why there's a, an option for link server installation is for centralizing your data. So if you've got a particular server that you want to nominate as your, your central server, um, for example, I'm going to use SQL02 today. I've got two instances. I've got a, uh, a default instance and I've got SQL02. I'm going to collect data for both of those instances. But instead of reporting, uh, collecting that data in both of the databases, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that I collect data on the default instance, but that data is going to get reported into SQL02's database along with SQL02's information as well. So we're going to get both servers worth information in one database on one server so we've got it all in one place where we, where we want it. Um, so let's get started so uh, if you if you watch the first video on installing the inspector you'll know exactly what to do to get the scripts if you haven't already installed it um, it's simply just a case to go to sqlundercover.com click on the github link um, go to the sql undercover inspector folder grab the sql file you know you can clone this if it makes life easier clone the repository uh, save a copy uh, but alternatively this is the best place to, to go to, to get the latest copy unless you've already got a clone that you're keeping up to date. Uh, grab the script from there and run that as we did before. Okay, so we've already got it here. So I'm going to use the DBA database and what it's going to do is just going to create the stored procedure. So what we want to do here is we want to copy the command out of there um, and we want to go over to a new query window. Now I'm just going to keep that there for a second because what we do need to do is make sure that we've uh, got this stored procedure on all of the instances that we need to cover. So in my example here I've got the default instance which I'm connected to now uh, but I also need to make sure I connect to the uh, central server that I'm going to be using. So in my case it's going to be SQL2. So I need to create it there as well. Okay. So I can get rid of that for the time being. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to leave things as defaults, with the exception of the link server. Now at this moment in time, I can't do anything with the link server because I haven't created it yet. So I'm just going to run through a very, very basic setup of uh, a link server between my default instance and SQL2. So on my default instance, I'm going to create a new link server but before I do that, I need to make sure I create a login. So on SQL2, I'm going to go and create a login. Now it's up to you, you don't need to use a SQL authentication login. Uh, you could use a Windows one if you've got things set up that way. I'm just going to keep things easy um, here, just, just for simplicity, just to demonstrate to you. So I'm just going to call this Inspector. And I'm just going to give it a very really simple password. And I'm not going to give it any permissions at all at this moment in time. But what I will need to do is apply it read-write permissions in the DBA database. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to do anything. So I'm going to create a user in here. For Inspector. Okay, we're going to link that, and the default instances are going to the default scheme is going to be Inspector, and I'm going to give this read write access, which is all it should need. So that's my login sorted. So now I can go and create my link server. So I'm just going to call this Inspector. LS, respect to link server. I'm going to keep it as OLADB and my data source is going to be um, the target of the link server. So in this case it's going to be my SQL02 instance. And we don't have to provide a catalog but I will provide a catalog. I'll call it DBA. So security, I'm going to use my 
inspector login. So the same login and password uh, as we created just a moment ago. So now I should have a nice little link server here that can see the DBA database and it can see all the tables. So this is good. We know, we know we've got a good working setup here. So what I'll now need to do is now I have this is put the name of that link server in here. So just as before, normally we would, you know, with the single instance installation, we would have left that as null. This time round, we're going to actually include that link server name. And what this should do is, under the hood, this is going to build all of the stored procedures uh, to insert into the, the the link server destination, rather than doing it all locally. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. So the first things first is I need to run this on my link server first. So I'm going to take a copy of that and I'm going to open up a new query because I don't actually want to have my central server I don't actually want to have my central server running with link server because I don't have a link server on my central server I only have it on the default instance um, so it's not going to work if I try and install it that way so just for the purposes of my central server I'm going to create this with this being null that's really important okay so we're going to keep that as null and I'm going to use the DBA database there and I'm going to install that so that's just installing a standard version of the inspector as if we were on a standalone instance not wanting to centralize any any information um, on my central server my, my laptop's running really slow. I don't know why that took so long. Um, so that's that done. That's that done on the central server. So central server set up. Now I need to make sure that for every other instance that I want to centralise from, I have to make sure that server name is populated with my link server. So I'm going to get executing with that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to show you the difference between um, decentralized uh, procedures and the standard procedure, just so you can see the difference and see what why there's that difference in um, parameter value there. So if we go to, let's go to, uh, I like to pick on the drive space, it tends to be one of the easier ones to read, smaller ones. So what you'll notice here is anywhere that's referencing uh, a centralized table now um, has got has got your link server populated in there. So we're going to be checking for existence in there. We're going to be deleting from there where required. We're going to be inserting in there where required now, as opposed to doing everything locally, um, for example, here. So let's check the dry space version over here as well. So this would be what a standard default instance looks like. Uh, no, no centralization. So it just goes to, to your standard cent, uh, uh, local DBA database, for example, uh, rather than the, the link server version. So with that in mind, um, that is that setup. It is that easy. You simply set that up, uh, your link server up, and you just tell it what name of link server you want to use. And then what should happen now is, uh, if we just use the dry space table as an example actually, let me just show you that. Let's open up a new query. So if we just do a select star from inspector.drivespace at the moment we've got nothing but if we kick off the job which would be on schedule if you use that uh, option or if you've already got your own schedule set if we kick off that job on the default instance what should happen is it's going to collect that data but instead of populating its own local database it's going to come and populate um, the centralized server instead okay so 
there's a perfect example of it populating this side and actually there's another good table to show you as well that's a bit better than this one because this one's only got one one row it does one row per day that's the idea of the dry space table but you can see that we're on SQL 02 uh, down here uh, but we've actually got data for the default instance so the same thing will apply um, here locally as well so if I if I run the collection over here for example uh, I'm going to get all the data in those tables um, except just for for the named instance so it's it's all going to be in the same place now I want to give you a good example of the um, drive space let's get rid of that get there with the drive space table but for the files themselves so it'd be file sizes it's a bit of a better one for viewing compared to the drive space so what we're seeing here is we see we've got both my default instance and my SQL02 instance worth of information all centralized all just being covered by by that collection um, so you're going to get everything here now the beauty of this is that when you run the report now I haven't got email set up so I'll have to just copy this out and paste it and just just quickly dump it into a HTML file for you to, for you to view but the beauty of this now is that instead of just reporting on one instance at a time it's going to give you any any servers that are in the current servers table it's going to report on those servers so fortunately I have both of my servers in here I've got SQL 2 and I've got my default instance in there so if I go to the report data table just to pick up that report because I didn't have an uh, email uh, address set up for it to, to, to email in a HTML report what I can do is just I'll just copy and paste that out of there so I'll just grab that and we just quickly just quickly dump it into this uh, HTML file I'm going to save that that's just a little inspector file here and if we open that up you'll see that we're getting reports on on both servers and and that's the beauty of centralizing it is that you're just going to get a single report but for multiple servers and this has been a really good thing uh, that, that we've used uh, time and time again um, for when we've got lots of servers in one place but they're all they're all connectable to each other you can, they can all see each other so you've got the benefit of, of being able to report on, a, on an entire stack if you've got an entire stack or if you've got uh, the, the beauty of this, this this side of things with centralizing is that if you've got uh, always on availability groups and you're taking backups across your secondary replicas the, the, the backup check because it has access to all of that backup information from all two three or four of your replicas it's going to aggregate that information for you so it's going to get the the max full it's going to get the last full da da uh, database backup that was taken the last log that was taken and what what server it was taken on and you're going to get all your ag backup prefs there too so it's a really good way especially if you're using always on to be able to centralize that data and report on it um, but certainly if you want to report for, for more than one server at a time this is the way to do it. it's a good way of doing it the alternative is the PowerShell collection which I'm going to run through on a separate video for you um, but that's it guys so any questions feel free to put them in the comments or we drop us a line on the SQL Undercover contact us page um, and just get cracking